Hello everyone. I am Dr. Rajkumar and today I shall be discussing the good, the bad and the ugly about pacifier use. Pacifiers which are also known as dummies or soothers are as deeply rooted in history as they are in controversy. Pacifiers made of clay, metal, pearl and coral have been discovered dating thousands of years back. Their use is very popular in today's culture as well. A recent Canadian trial has reported that 84% of infants have used a pacifier at one point or the other. The Canadian Dental Association recommends the use of pacifiers over thumb sucking as it helps the parents to control the habit better. If your child wants to suck between feedings then you can offer a pacifier but never instead of the feeding and never without the extra attention or cuddles that a parent can provide. So let's discuss some common queries that are associated with pacifier use. So, what are the advantages of a pacifier? You can control the use of a pacifier, but it's hard to control thumb sucking. When it's time to stop using a pacifier, you can simply throw it away, but you cannot throw away a thumb. Several studies also suggest that the use of pacifier in the first year of life can significantly reduce the risk of sudden infant death syndrome also known as SIDS. It also helps to provide sensory comfort to preterm babies in hospital settings. The next query being can pacifier use cause problems? Well, ideally pacifier should not be used beyond the age of 2 years and if that is not possible then try to discourage the use of pacifiers around 5 years of age that is right before the permanent teeth come in as it can lead to severe changes which may require orthodontic treatment incorrect use of pacifiers during the infant stage can lead to difficulties in breastfeeding which in turn may lead to early weaning of the child prolonged use of pacifiers can lead to possible ear infections Long term use of pacifiers can lead to dental problems which include incorrect positioning of the teeth wherein the upper front teeth get pushed to a position which is beyond ideal and also there is difficulty in the upper front teeth and the lower front teeth touching which in turn may affect the way the child bites on food as well as with the pronunciation of certain sounds like the s and the z sound it may also lead to mouth breathing wherein the child tends to breathe more from the mouth rather than the nose pacifier use can also lead to difficulties in speech and language as when a child holds on to a pacifier in his or her mouth it prevents him from exploring the full range of tongue movements required to make all speech sounds pacifier use can also lead to tooth decay especially in the front teeth if the pacifier is being dipped in sugary solutions like corn syrup or maple syrup or even honey The use of honey in infants can lead to botulism which is a form of food poisoning. If you choose to have your child suck onto a pacifier then here are some do's and don'ts which I strongly recommend. It's best not to start using a pacifier until breastfeeding is well established as it can lead to problems with breastfeeding which in turn may lead to early weaning of the child. An exception to this rule is the use of pacifiers for sick or premature infants who are hospitalized and who may benefit from using them for comfort. You can also sterilize or disinfect a pacifier by placing it in boiling water for 5 minutes or you may follow the manufacturer's instructions. After the pacifier cools down you can give it to your child. For day to day cleaning you can wash it with warm water and soap. Also Do not try to clean a pacifier by placing it in your mouth and then passing on the same to your child as it may pass the germs from your mouth to your child's. Never tie a pacifier around your baby's neck with long strings of ribbons. This may cause strangulation. Use the clips which are given along with the pacifier. Always check for cracks or tears in the pacifier before giving it to your baby. If you see any just throw the pacifier out. Also replace a pacifier after every 2 months. Apart from that, never give a pacifier for use right after giving medications like analgesics, antibiotics or even vitamins as these may contain ingredients which may cause the material in the pacifiers to break down. Also, 
never ever try to make a pacifier at home yourself this may cause choking which might even lead to death so now moving on to tips for giving a pacifier use limit the time you allow your child to use the pacifier use it only for sleeping or for comfort never try to use punishment or humiliation to force your child to give a pacifier use it may backfire completely instead include them and ask them to throw away the pacifier themselves or leave it under the pillow for the soother fairy this is especially helpful if your child is a little older that is around 3 to 4 years you can also start a reward chat in order to track their progress like i always say positive reinforcement is the best treatment if you notice that your child is trying to avoid using the pacifier then make sure that you give them lots of praise let them know that how proud of their achievement you are and how they've grown up also allow your child to express his or her emotions especially if they're angry or upset do not take away the pacifier at that time as it may traumatize them further instead give them extra attention and lots of hugs and cuddles once rid of the pacifier your child might ask for it again this mostly happens rather than not at this point do not give in let them know that the pacifier is gone and that they're all grown up now and so the decision to use a pacifier in infants and children remains controversial and an individual choice for today's parents which should be determined by the needs of their newborn infant or child stay tuned for more information on teething in my next video in the meantime keep smiling and namaste